I am doing more self-reflection in this time. I'm trying to to understand and discern more of what God's will is. That was an experience in itself for me because it allowed it. It, it actually exposed a lot of idols. And hello, ladies and gents, boys and girls, and everyone watching of all ages. Thank you for joining us for a new episode of Youth Fires. And we are here today with a few of the Youth Fires team, Youth Fires crew, as we bring today a discussion about our heart's desires. And in this season, we want to express and discuss uh, what our hearts desires, because we know in this season a lot of things, a lot of our plans and intentions have been realigned, and um, basically our lives have been shaped around this pandemic that we are currently in. We're bringing this to you via Zoom. And the thing about it is, were those desires, were those original intents that we had pre pandemic? Were they God's will or were they our own desires? And was it actually a better thing now in this pandemic that we didn't fulfill those desires or are we worse off? And that's what we're going to discuss in this uh, episode with you, everyone. And we are here with Ariel, we're here with Samuel, and we are here with Shona. Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey. <laughs> Things are good. Things are good. Things are good. Things are good. I like to hear that. I like to hear that. Even when things are not good, I like to hear things are good. <laughs> <laughs> Rejoice. You know? Yeah, you know, it's like we confess it into the atmosphere. Things are good. Things are good. God is good, and therefore things are good. Yeah. So as we get into it, you know, guys, um, we want to talk a little bit, uh, I think, firstly, about our personal experiences. Uh, that we have been facing in this pandemic. Um, our heart's desires. And the first thing we're going to ask is, 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 have things been fulfilled for us or have things been put on the back burner due to the pandemic? And for me, firstly, I, I have seen, and as I said, as I said, we were still experiencing it right now, especially where we are and at the time of this recording what we are facing in our particular country is that we've seen dramatic change and i've seen dramatic change um in my life in the uh, in the way that i would move around and the way that i would do things and the way that we would interact with people um that has been taken aback significantly and it really came to a point where you're like, okay, God, you know, if it's especially for me something, and what we're doing here right now is we're trying to reach an audience and speak into an audience. And that's something that I do. And then now that that audience is physically taken away, what does that mean? How then do you get the message of the gospel out? Or is it now a case where God's saying, all right, you don't have that audience then do you think it's a moment for you to self-reflect and be like, okay, maybe I need to get closer to God. Maybe I need to change the way certain things are done. Maybe I need to get more creative in, in how I do things so that it doesn't become a case where your heart's desire was just to speak to people, but your heart's desire was to speak the word of God to an audience or to a people to get their life transformed. And that's just, that's just a little piece for me, but let me hear from you guys. For, for me, like it has been, uh, this would be like the second time around lockdown, you know? And the first time it was almost the same way it is, we had to literally reflect and check ourselves and check what what we're aiming towards, the desires of our heart, what we're thinking about, what we're looking for. And I mean, that first, that first time around with the self-searching, like that was an experience in itself for me because it allowed, it, it, 
it actually exposed a lot of idols. It, it exposed a lot of things that I didn't even realize was there on the inside of my heart. Things that I would have been focusing on, um, you know. But even previous to that, I would say right now I'm in university. And from the very beginning of starting university, there was a switch in and the desires of my heart. Because when I started, I had this big plan. I thought I had a plan that I was going to be <laughs> following through it, but God switched everything, absolutely everything. And it, it, it brought me to a place where I had to be willing to surrender everything I planned for four years, everything I, you know, and mind you, I thought these things were in alignment with the will of God. But when God brought it before me and showed me, you were following what you wanted. This is where I was leading you. It was a very difficult place because I was set on these things. I was set on these things. I was set on, so I, I love music, you know, and I've always wanted my voice to be used by God to, you know, carry the message of the gospel to people. Like that was solely, that is solely what I want my voice to be used for in the kingdom. And, you know, I was on my way becoming a gospel artist, you know? <laughs> but what I realized along the journey is that it kept asking for compromise more and more and more. And the direction I was going, I didn't even see when I started to move off track. And I thought it was okay. But, but every time I, I made a compromise or made a decision, I was like, God will, God would understand. Or, you know, this is just so I could get past this phase and everything will be resolved later. But yeah. then when I saw how many doors were open, how many things went out of work how far i strayed from god and my relationship with god because then things started to be less about the message and and actually the presence of god in the midst of something and it started to be more about the sound of it being what people want and sometimes you know you, you, you reach this place where people start to these people that would have been there before you tend to be caught up in the well, you're marketing so you have to give people what they want or you have to you know do certain things to make sure that you, you build a following and it literally challenged me because even in the process i would be like but this doesn't sound right but this doesn't sound right and i know the word says this and the word says that but then you start listening to people versus listening to the holy spirit who is speaking to you yeah. <laughs> and i mean after going that way for a while, as I said, the moment, it, it, it was literally like a switch. It was like everything, it was, you know, switch on, switch off. I was going full speed one direction and everything just stopped. And it's not just stopped, it, it, it was, it stopped and redirected, but it was almost, I felt, it felt like a tangible switch because nothing was the same. I couldn't even desire anything the same. Nothing felt the same. And, and I mean, it had a moment where it is, there was a lot of brokenness because I had to let go. It had a process, it had a season, it had, it had a period of letting go. And there's still, there's still the processing of letting go of things. But, you know, there was so much more to gain and, and as the days continue to go by, because even with the pandemic coming into everything with COVID-19, you know, as while it came, I was already in this process where it is God was literally turning things around for me. And I mean, I know, I know that, you know, it, it, for me, it didn't hit me as hard because of how many things change and how how secure i felt in god's keeping hand as well as god you know given you know that that warning ahead of time and and literally preparing preparing us for it 
it was it was literally something that it was an easier transition because God already had me going a particular way. And right. even continuing there, even when the enemy would come and try different things, attempt, you know, to try and draw me this direction or that direction, because sometimes you feel, okay, it was just that one time where it is you started going a straight No, the enemy is not giving up and it comes around in cycles. Yes. Which is which is why I said this second time around with, 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 with the pandemic and, and everything, the lockdown, you know, this wave. It allowed me, even when just we came back and I was I still had to check myself again. Yeah. And I mean that's a daily thing, eh? I mean, we always have to check ourselves on a daily basis. But when does it happen again? I was like, I actually got I I went back to the first time and I was like okay i'm in a better place than i was there but i still could be in a better place that i am than i am now yes always room for improvements so you know it it, it it has been something where god has really been taking my eyes off of what i see and then to as as a believer as as a child of god literally understanding who i am because sometimes we get so consumed and things happening around us and uh, you know, you know, our daily lives with families, friends, co-workers, um, colleagues, whatever it is it might be. And sometimes you start to let that environment define who you are. And it, it starts to define the direction you go and the desires that you build. But, yeah. but really and truly like set, having that foundation in the word and that that actual communication and relationship with God, it keeps it keeps you. Like any time I've started to stray, and even sometimes I would get worried. Yeah, it's almost like God would just grab me back, and I would still have a decision to make. So it's not something where it is you're just saying, "Well, Jesus, come to the rescue." I there's always that factor of making a decision, and then you have to ask yourself. Do you really want this? Is this really what you want? Because it's easy to say, Lord, I want more of you. God, I want to live my life for you. I want to be used as a vessel for you. And, you know, in simple situations, you wouldn't want to speak to people about God or you're intimidated or you're saying, let me stay silent or it have so many different lies the enemy would put around you. Yeah. And you have to make that decision to fight past those things. So many opportunities to compromise, etc. And you right. still have to know what is the true desire of your heart. Yeah. And Shona, to, to, to just to continue the flow of this discussion, Ariel touched on something where she said she, and the first time we had this, this uh, lockdown in, in the beginning of the pandemic last year, is like she was already being prepared and she was already almost um, totally settled in what was to come. And that's because certain instructions and God was working in her and her heart's desires and removing idols even from before. Can you attest to that as well? Where even entering this season that you somewhat felt kind of not over worried, but at rest and so what was taking place, even though some things for you personally might have been put on hold? For sure. I feel like as though this second time around is God given, giving us another chance to actually do what we may not have done in the first lockdown that he really wanted us to do. Um, I would say that I am doing more self-reflection in this time and trying to to understand and discern more of what God's will is because it had a point where, you know, it was constantly me studying, you know, all these things that I couldn't get done, all these things that I wanted to do. And I keep realizing that, you know, my plans sometimes are just not lining up with God. So in this second time around, I was, I, I'm not um, overwhelmed by it. I'm not upset about it because I'm going to use this time, I'm using this time right now to try to get deeper and understand what it is God is really trying to say. And it's an opportunity for everybody to, to go back into that 
self-reflection stage because I mean the reason why he wants us in this uh, lockdown state again is because you know we, there's something that we seem to be missing and so we we have to try to get to the point of what he is saying right um that that is so true now as as we hear from uh sami a bit you know i just want to touch a little bit on psalm 27 and it says in verse 7 hear O lord when i cry with my voice have mercy also upon me and answer me when you said seek my face my heart said to you your face lord i will seek and it goes on to say do not hide your face from me do not turn your servant away in anger you have been my help do not leave me nor forsake me O god of my salvation and i believe that's a scripture that <laughs> definitely the first time around especially now the second time around as as this pandemic has really kind of hit us as a nation of Toronto Tobago much harder than it did the first time. This is where David was crying out and he said, you know, do not hide your face from me. And I, when things get bad, that's the first thing we go to or we say is, Lord, where are you in this situation? Lord, what is going on? So that is when we cry. We always cry when things are bad or when we are in trouble or when we get in a kind of a spiritual licks happening. That is when we cry and we ask for mercy. But as the scripture says it, and when you said, seek my face, that's what God said last year. And that's what he's coming around to say again, because guess what? We're back square one where we are stuck at home you know many of you are watching this it may be a little relaxed where you are but there are still others who are facing being locked at home because this virus is still raging on god is saying seek my face now if we know the heart the heart and the mind of one it says my heart said to you my heart said to you your face lord i will seek so the heart is taking the commands of god to hear us to obey heart and mind are one therefore we must seek him now and there we will find the answers it's not true sammy yes very true yeah i think one thing about the desire and it's always the these two things to understand that our desires is not our own, it's God's desires, not our desires, and two is timing. And that's something mm -hmm. God was speaking to me, and while God was speaking, he said, he started to speak to me, and he kept on talking to me about timing, and how important timing is, is to his desires, to our desires. So there's a lot of people right now that were probably doing things at that time, but God's, but it wasn't the right time, and it wasn't that time for, to do that thing. So because of the pandemic, and God knew the pandemic was coming, it wasn't the right time, but because they thought God spoke it, they thought they were supposed to do it now. One God said no, it was, but it wasn't now, like right now to do it at this moment. And I actually sense that a lot, that a lot of people, you know, before pandemic, the things that they weren't supposed to do, that it was the wrong timing. And God is now bringing it back to them to now to understand that the time is coming very soon for them to do that thing. But we need to understand that it wasn't for what season, what season is for what season, what is the season for that certain thing that we're supposed to do. That's the important thing. Remember, as much as the heart and mind are one, is the seasons. God works through seasons. Everything to do with him is seasons. And so the season, what season are we in for what circumstance? And that's when it comes to the heart and mind of God, what is you know, first to understand the desires and the plans for life, even young people right now, you know, we need to, I, I show people in, at home and not doing school or whatever you're doing right now, you don't know what to do, right? But don't let the flesh and your desires overtake you, but let's understand the season and not understand the timing of God 
and everything to do with God's timing. And, and he's literally acting in my heart to understand that his timing and he knows all things. So when we ask, when we ask, where are, you know, you ask the question, um, God, we ask, where are we? Where is he? He's asking us that same question. Where are you? Because he's always there. You need to cry out. It's an action. You need to remember, faith is an action. If we don't cry out, nothing will happen. We'll just be stuck. Right? So even now for the Church of Jesus Christ in turn, that we have to cry out to God. Yeah. It is us to bring this change of situation. Not the, the Prime Minister can do all he can do, but it's us as the Church of Jesus Christ to change the situation, to bring it forth, to speak forth, to pray forth, and to declare into the atmosphere. I will, I, and even now, is our heart desires for it to change for our own self or because we're seeing people dying? Mm. Yeah, even now, I hear literally there are people right now in the church praying for praying for it to, for it to change for their own selfish desires. And I hear right now that prayer is not going to work because our heart desires should be that there's so many people dying in the country. And I found that there's 41 people that died the last three days and turned out alone. So we have to, our prayer has to be, our, our prayer has to be that we're looking at the numbers and we're looking at the multiple times and multiple cases and we're praying out of that hunger and that crying for that one and that family members that are dying. That has to be our cry. Our cry has to be a selfless one, not because we want to go back to church. We cannot just pray because we want to go back to church. It has to be because people are dying. Yes. It That's so be. good. That's so good. That's so good. I just want to touch on a little piece of scripture here that I was I was just reading while Samuel was talking and, and he's saying it cannot be that we're doing it for selfish desires, but it has to do it out of the love of God in our hearts to see people healed, to see people delivered, and to see the, the spread of this virus significantly be uh, reduced. And it says, Follow along with me here in Psalm 26 from verse 1. And, and those of you who are listening and, and, and even my colleagues here who are on this Zoom with me, you would, you would see how it, it really speaks to what's happening. It says, Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord. I shall not slip. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. For your loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in your truth. I have not sat with idolatrous mortals, nor will I go in with hypocrites. I have hated the assembly of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, so I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with a voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. What a scripture, guys. What a scripture. And, and right now we see a lot of parallels and a lot of words that we're seeing there um, has been const have been constantly um, thrown out to the world in what we need to do to deal with this pandemic. So, guys, what do you think about that scripture? Put it on right now. The scripture that people need. The scripture that people need to understand. You know, even when he's praying, he's praying for God to. He's praying out a heart of. That's what we need to be right now. That's his, that's the love we need to have right now and the understanding we need to have right now. That when he says, vindicate me, he's saying, God, I want to be right just like you. I want to be like you. That's what he's saying. So at this moment, we need to have that selfless heart. When he says, vindicate me, he's saying, I want to be like you. I want to represent you in the right way. That's what we need to be right now. And I kept on putting in my mind when I could vindicate me. It's literally saying, I want to be like you, God. I want to represent you in the right way. That's what we need to be right now. Even if it's just to obey the instructions of the government, if we're not spiritually at the level that we can pray, but to 
there's the idea to obey the government and what it says also whether you're pre-warrior you're praying for the nation whatever it may be to vindicate i mean to just be an example of him all right ladies and gents we'd like to thank sami and we'd like to thank ariel we'd like to thank shona for being on to speaking about our heart desires and just really self-reflecting on on what has been happening in 2020 and continues in 2021 and um, we'll be doing a lot of more of these discussions to really um, get as personal as, as we can uh, to get you guys to see that this is a real thing that's happening that affects each and every one of us. And um, we will see where God has, what God has planned for us. And, and will we then realize that his heart's desires have to be synchronized with our heart's desires. And his will for our life takes um, paramount, takes priority in everything that we do. And especially things, since a lot of things have become a little more tunnel vision. Um, and our, our vision actually has got a, a lot more uh, pigeonhole in that we have to focus on specific things and not focus on the broad many things as, as things are a little restricted and a little um, more controlled. What then are we going to do and what then are we going to focus on? All right. So thanks again for watching this episode of Youth Fires. Please do not forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment. We want to know what do you think about this discussion today? What have been your desires? that you thought linked with God's desires, but then it's no longer there. We want to know. All right. Thank you again. Bye.